the Dauntless. He examines the transcript of the next great announcement courtesy of the Undaunted. There were moments, however fleeting, where Admiral Cistern had some level of doubt, where he considered if perhaps it would be better to fly under the radar and build the power of humanity and the Undaunted out of sight of major galactic events. Everything he had done from the initial announcement had been bold and brash, open and fearless. Then he remembers the sheer nature of a technologically advanced civilization. There is nothing you can do from stopping the curious and ambitious from learning something, which means you can only move to counter their moves, often by making the entire series of events far too public to even consider moving, which is part of reason he had taken things public. Also, recruitment. Recruitment was a big part of things as they always needed more numbers and were endlessly refining new tricks and techniques to enhance how effective their existing numbers were. If you don't have quantity, then you need quality in as great a concentration as possible. There's a yip and the somewhat grown terrier around his feet gets ear scritches. Little Charles was what he had tried to call the friendly pooch, but Ambassador Tal had him answering to Goblin. Thankfully, the pale fur of the very good boy didn't stick out too much on his dress whites, so there were little, if any, issues to having him around. Lady Tacanped is going through the motions of announcements and getting business through. There was a lot to be done, and his little announcement was certainly going to shake things up somewhat, especially as it was arriving. There is a halt in the proceedings as a young woman walks up to Lady Tycanped and respectfully presents a data chip with a handwritten letter. She pauses to read it, then visibly rereads it. Then she turns back to the council at large. My dear counselors, it appears that minor mystery of the galaxy has chosen to reveal themselves in order to quell chaos and confusion. And while it is always unfortunate when our most important work is disrupted and our valuable time infringed upon, it would appear that this may very well be a worthy sacrifice, unlike many of the common annoyances that press upon us. So, while I must beg your indulgence, I promise it is of sufficient value. Lady Teakenped explains with the kind of grace and poise as a queen at court telling her petitioners that they're about to be interrupted for the latest comedy routine from the jester. Then the projector lights up and, yes, that's Emmanuel Skidderway, codenamed Jasper Blue in his combination medieval conqueror's outfit and undaunted uniform. Okay. Mostly it was a medieval conquest outfit of full plate armor with ornate designs fit for an Urthani with a cape that had the undaunted insignia on it and several pennants with the crests of the nations he'd conquered. But it was still imposing, especially as he was looking out intensely, his thicker neck, clearly modified claws, enormous wings, shimmering fur, and six antenna with a clearly predatory gaze looking out made for an imposing sight when it was expanded to the size the hologram emitters used to bring things across. To the Council of the Galaxy upon Centris and the Galaxy at large, greetings. I am Emmanuel Skidderway, the resurrected conqueror and savior of the lost world of Lacrin, defier of death and slayer of the immortal, there are other titles besides, but for the sake of brevity, let us leave it there. He states in an imperial and imposing tone. For scale, a canador in an undaunted uniform steps out from behind him and salutes followed by Horace Blue with a massive grin. They're enjoying this. I am here to confirm the rumors of a primal Urthani, that being myself and to apologize for not being able to present myself properly to the galaxy at large. There is a great deal of work to do, and my busy schedule is already being imposed upon by my making this message, so I will not waste time or split hairs. Yes, I am the second variant of Primal in the galaxy. No, I will not be the last. No, I will not tell you which one is next despite my looking her right in the face. Yes, I understand how I did this. 
No, I will not explain at the moment. I am busy and it will take many years, if not centuries of research to fully understand what happened and how. I have little time left and far too much to do. So for the sake of time and brevity, I will finish this introduction and explanation in traditional Urthani trill speech. However, just know it is a summary of my understanding of what shall be occurring to the Urthani at large and my apologies for the disruption of your lives. Emmanuel explains before suddenly letting out what sounds like a ringing song of bells as he quickly indicates his claws, his antenna, his neck, his stomach, and his wings. Thank you for your time and understanding. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a world to assist. Then the message cuts off and Lady Tycand lets off a light laugh. Well now, I do believe we're owed a slight explanation, Admiral Cistern. Perchance we could have a good one? He's given three seconds to compose himself and he angles the camera to only catch him from the shoulders up. That way it wouldn't catch sight of him making sure little Charles was calm and not bouncing into view. Thank you, Lady Tycand Ped. As for my explanation, one of my soldiers, an Orthani, went above and beyond the call of duty even by undaunted standards. However, his increased capacity does not alter the fact that he is mid-mission. He is part of a team to rescue a lost colony reduced to savagery. He has already had to quell several belligerent nations and been forced into some truly bizarre situations on his mission to save lives and return some semblance of civilization and prosperity to a world on the borders of wild space. And you implied that there is no primal Urthani because, Lady Tikanped asks, because the man is in the middle of a delicate situation. Regardless of the strength of a primal or those with similar capabilities, he is surrounded by a much more fragile population. It would go against his mission, his own personal request, and the well-being of the people of Lacrin to simply give coordinates and allow a flood of the curious and energetic. There is an enormous amount of building, teaching, healing, and much, much more that is needed on that world. To say nothing of the sole survivor of the brutal crash, E. Sarazon Whiteflow and her delicate mental state, even now, she has hours every other day with a psychiatric doctor to help her come to terms with the thousand years of trauma and suffering she has endured. And Miss White Flow would be, Lady Tacanped prompts, the first primal to call Lakrin home, a primal Nagasha who was an infant at the time of the colony ship crashing, and she spent the next century in complete isolation and desperate survival. Then, she followed up with the next nine centuries seeing all her daughters, granddaughters, and great-granddaughters wither and die in her arms as she failed to keep them alive. Having been too young to understand how to induce a healing coma and not being able to understand it herself as she was busy running a nation and trying to stop the religion forming around her from turning violent, Admiral Cistern explains, he has to hold little Charles down somewhat firmly to stop the little dog from jumping up and ruining the presentation. I see. So this world of Lacron, hideously common name that has two primals currently living on it and only one is a Nagasha. The other is a conquering warlord under your employ. He's also a scholar, madam. Fully accredited, although the legal department is having quite the time trying to have his legally registered death discounted. He died? He got better, Lady Tycan Ped. Quite the feat, no? Admiral Cistern asks. Was he revived from a legally dead corpse? Lady Tycan Ped demands, even as Admiral Cistern taps his ear and listens to something. There's no earpiece there. It's for show. I apologize, but my legal department is currently howling at me for already sharing far too much of my employee's personal information. I'm sure you understand. He states with a slight bow, even as his arm comes down a little quicker than normal to stop a very happy to be there boy from jumping up. I see. Thank you for your explanations, Admiral Cistern. Although we do hope you share more with this council in the future. Lady Tycanped says, as far as my legal teams and the law allows me, 
I shall, Admiral Cistern says before the camera starts blinking and he gives another slight bow before it turns off. Suddenly, he's effectively alone in his little booth again. The timing is nearly perfect as little Charles jumps up and nearly gets him full in the mouth with a lick. All right, you little deviant, that's enough of that. Calm, calm. He orders the dog, who does indeed sit and try to look calm, but the wagging tail is a dead giveaway that the overgrown puppy is anything but calm. All right, after this session, we're going on walkies with mommy, all right, all right? That's apparently more than all right as little Charles recognizes the word and hops off his lap to race around the tiny room and then rush up to him again, which is both good and bad timing as the door buzzer is being pressed very insistently by someone who clearly wants answers. All right, soon enough, little Charles, but I need to put a leash on you so you don't jump on the whoever's on the other side of that door. It takes a few moments to get a good grip of the overly bouncy dog's collar and clip it before tying it to a hook he had installed on the wall for both this and his hat as needed, and then he heads to the door. There is a data chip installed on the dog's collar. It doesn't say anything important, but it does contain a locator worm in it and a lot of useless but technically true information. After all, in the game of spy versus spy false information, is a very important part of things. I've got it, sir. Private Stream says teleporting in with a hidden Kutha trace on the floor as an anchor point, and Admiral Cistern smirks and adjusts his cap. He stands at ease and ready to receive whoever's at the other side of the door. Not eager to be around little Charles? Admiral Cistern asks in an amused tone. My cadet uniform is dark blue, sir. The fur clashes, Private Stream answers with a very innocent look before opening the door. Hello, Miss Nagasha with the frantic look. How can we help you? You have a missing primal, and who are you? Private Stream, ma'am, sir, Private Stream answers with the practiced over-eager salute that seemingly knocks him off balance and requires him to adjust his cap for a moment. It really is fascinating to see a manipulation tactic perfected in front of you. As there's a wistful sigh from deeper in the hallway as the sudden confirmation of an undaunted primal Earthani has the hallway outside his booth packed, meaning that there's more people for the cute routine to hit right in the maternal instincts. Thank you, Private Stream. Now seeing as how I'm going to be a little busy, perhaps you could bring little Charles for a walk? He needs his exercise while I deal with the many, many questions already waiting for me. But sir, the legal department has already advised you to stop, Sir Philip calls in from the hallway. I do beg your pardon. Please excuse me. I am so very sorry, madam. I must step over your tail. The aged man enters the small room and both receives and gives a salute to private stream. Cue frantic hat realignment and then a more dignified compliment with Admiral Cistern. Anything I can help you with, sir? Escorting Private Stream and the dog out? Perchance organizing your newest petitioners? Thank you, Sir Philip. I'll have both if it's not too much trouble. Admiral Cistern asks and receives a slight bow. Of course, sir. Come along, Private Stream, and do keep little Charles away from your uniform if you're able. Gray fur stands out a great deal against dark blue. Sir, yes, sir, Private Stream calls out eagerly. In less than two minutes, the data chip with virus is stolen, a proper line is formed, and little Charles is getting a walk to burn off his excess energy. Things are going swimmingly, 